All right, YouTube, we back. 1975. Caprice drop top. We're going to go ahead and dive in on this frame today. Uh, as you can see, I got this is just a pile that's from the holes in the frame. You see the holes in the frame. I just took pieces of that broken brake line was just jabbing it through there and running the air hose through it behind it and just that's all of the rust and just dirt and stuff from over the years that came out of the frame uh, if you guys look you see those retainers over those studs in the rear end those retainers have never been removed they put those retainers on at the factory as the car goes down the assembly line to hold the drum on there so it doesn't fall off as the car is moving down the assembly line before they put the tires on. So that tells me that this car has never had rear brakes on it since 1975 when it came off the assembly line. Because there, I'm not gonna say that, but I'm gonna assume it because I don't think that you can really get them retainers off without damaging them. I've never been able to and I don't see anybody going through the process of putting them back on there after they took them off. So we're just gonna assume that this rear end has never been, had new brakes in the rear. Uh, all of the brake lines, everything is just completely, you see here's all of the, I mean, they're just terrible. Got the needle scaler, uh, you know, as I was scaling the frame, you can see it's busting holes, different spots, different areas. But what we're gonna work on right now is we're gonna notch the rear of this frame to run wider, bigger wheels. So this hole has to stay. This hole is for you to get your socket through there to take the lower control arm off. The bolt is inside of this hole. So this hole has to stay. So I'm gonna make my first cut here and I'm gonna cut all of this out all the way back to this body mount here. And you can see all of this is rusty. All of this is gonna be replaced as well, but I'm gonna I'm stop my cut right here for now. Then once I get this piece of metal out, then I can just, I can see the inside of the frame, clean it all out and look and see. I know there's some holes on the back side over here that'll have to be repaired. Um, this whole rear section of the frame on both sides will be rebuilt like I did on the cutlass frame. If you guys seen the work I did on the cutlass frame, this would be the same exact thing. Uh, a lot of guys are scared to cut these frames up. Uh, there's really nothing to be scared of. There's no weight on the rear of this frame. So when I cut this metal out of here, there's still enough good metal in there that this won't move. It's not under any load. There's, like I said, no weight in the rear of the frame. So nothing is it's pulling the frame down. It's sitting on the rear end right now. The shocks are there. So when I cut this metal out of here, I'm not worried about the frame uh, bending or, or tweaking or anything like that. That's a, that's a major thing with a lot of guys. They get nervous when they cut these frames apart, worrying about if the frame is ever gonna be straight again. You know, there always is a possibility it could move, but these frames are really rigid. They're made to take a lot of abuse. And even though this one is in fairly bad shape, I still trust the metal that's there to keep it from moving. And like I said, once I open all of this up, I'm going to be able to clean the inside out, judge the inside of the frame, see if I need to, how much plating. Cause when I cut these and I do these rear, uh, frame notches on any car, G bodies, uh, big bodies, caprices, Impalas, box Chevys, when I cut this out of here, I always plate the inside back of the frame just for extra security. Now, when I do it, if you don't have access to metal, when you cut this plate off of here, you can clean this plate up real nice, grind it down, wire wheel it both sides of it, and you can actually use this metal. Because some of this metal is, is bad, of course, but the good parts of this metal, if you, especially if you had one that was you know, fairly rust-free frame, there's no problem with you cutting this down a little bit, 
to where to slide inside of the frame and then weld in the same metal into the back side of this frame and that gives you extra support in your notch area and just stiffens the frame up more gives you a little more you know meat in there per se but I always use 316 steel you can see here it's brand new steel I always use 316 steel for all of the patchwork all of the frame repairs gives you a good good thickness it's actually thicker than the frame material that was used from the factory so you know I'm not worried about the frame you know not being as sturdy as it was before as you can see the welds on these frames are terrible from the factory they don't weld the whole seams they spot weld them the welds look like shit <clears throat> and they're just running them down assembly line and getting them out the door so I'm gonna cut you guys back on once I cut this section out show you what the inside of the frame looks like and uh, show you the progress <laughs> 